climate change and this fear mongering of the end of the world. Okay, when I was a young Dan, all right, I believed the world was going to end. I didn't want to have children because of this false premise of we're killing the planet and overpopulation, that resources are going to be scarce, that having kids in a dying world wouldn't be sensible to do. Over time and researching and learning, I came to understand, and not just this video that I'm going to show, but videos of years of grooming to demoralize, strip us from any purpose and just constant fear to just give up on life into a slave mentality. Check out this video by John Stossel, impeccable B-roll. The world's about to end. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. Throughout history, people predicted the end of humanity. This month, 60 Minutes was on the case. You seem to be saying that humanity is not sustainable. Oh, humanity is not sustainable. Bizarrely, they featured this man, who has always predicted doom. We are very close to a famine disaster in the United States. Why would they treat him like an expert? Paul Ehrlich may have lived long enough to see some of his dire prophecies come true. But his dire prophecies, again and again, turn out to be wrong. In the next 15 years, the end will come. And by the end, I mean an utter breakdown of the capacity of the planet to support humanity. His bestseller, which sold an amazing three million copies, said nothing can prevent a substantial increase in the world death rate. That was comically wrong. Today, there are four billion more people. The death rate fell dramatically. Too many people, too much consumption. 60 Minutes did mention that Ehrlich was wrong about widespread starvation, but they take him seriously, never mentioning his other ridiculous predictions, like his claim that by the year 2000, England will not exist because of climate change. But England's still here. Instead of interviewing doomsayers like Ehrlich, 60 Minutes should talk to Marion Tupi, the creator of humanprogress.org. Everybody is getting richer and longer living, and life is getting better. It is. The modern era has brought much longer lives and the greatest decline in poverty ever. Oh! Young activists think capitalists are destroying the earth. Millions of people are dying. People are throwing paint at uh, works of art or blocking traffic. They believe it's the moral thing to do because experts like Ehrlich scare them. Paul Ehrlich wouldn't talk to me for this video, but seven years ago he did talk to us. He said, well, when you predict the future, you get things wrong. It's very difficult for me to picture things holding together for more than another decade. Well, he's wrong about everything, but they invite him back. They love this stuff. If you sell the apocalypse, People feel like you are deep and that you care. But if you are selling rational optimism, you sound uncaring. Uncaring? Childbearing is herewith forbidden. It's the doomsayers who are uncaring. You have to get the death rate and birth rate in balance. And there's only two ways to do it. One is to bring the birth rate down. The other is to push the death rate up. Ehrlich even suggested that government should sterilize people to prevent the population from rising. Paul Ehrlich always sees human beings as a problem, destroyers rather than creators. He thinks that human beings are no different to rats or rabbits. When we consume all the grass around us, our population explodes and then it's going to collapse. But human beings are fundamentally different. We have the capacity to innovate. Marion Tupi is the anti-Ehrlich. His new book, Super Abundance, shows more people are good for humanity and the environment. It's counterintuitive to think that more people can be good for the environment because the people will buy cars and they need housing. We use stuff. We use stuff, but we also grow stuff. What matters is new knowledge. Think about something as simple as sand. When we started melting down sand to create glass, we used the first glass for glass beads or jars. But now we are using glass in fiber optic cables and microchips. Similar innovation in farming, transportation, genetic engineering is why our growing population won't destroy nature. But we're told we're destroying forests. Looks like a, a disease across the planet. Boom, there goes the forest. Nonsense. Forests have grown by 35% in North America and Western Europe in the last 20 years. Grown because people found ways to produce more food on less land. 
and prosperous countries can afford to protect nature. But the idea that human innovation is helping nature isn't as popular as doomsayers' claims. This universe is finite, its resource is finite. If life is left unchecked, life will cease to exist. When Ehrlich's book became popular, Thanos, a comic book character, was introduced. By killing 50% of all living things in the universe, <laughs> he will allow the other half to live on. In the year 2022, nothing runs anymore. That same year, we also got the movie Soylent Green. The population of the United States has run out of food, and so every time a human being dies, he or she is converted into a biscuit called Soil and Green. Step right up, Soil and Green, Soil and Green right here. That's then fed to people. You gotta tell them, Soil and Green is people! Now we're past 2022, and we're still not eating each other. Nevertheless, ignorant doomsayers still want us to panic. I want you to feel the fear I feel every day. Many young people have been so misled, they're afraid to have kids but that would hurt the world. The biggest problem the world will face in 20 years is population collapse. That's a bigger problem. Fewer women have babies today, but we need young people to provide the innovation that will solve the Earth's problems. If fewer people have babies, the child who might grow up to cure cancer or develop a miracle battery may never be born. But more people by itself is not enough to get all this innovation. It is certainly not if the number of people was all that mattered. China would have been the richest country for centuries. But in fact, what you need is people and freedom. If you let human beings be free, they are going to create more value for everyone. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Hopefully that was entertaining and highly informative for you guys comment below what your thoughts are about that the narrative of overpopulation we live in a huge ass world okay me living in california just driving down to la vast land it's not overpopulated and you see in that video we're actually innovating less land to grow our foods which is amazing and we need population